Hi, I'm here again and I'm here to give you some more tips. My name is Hugh John and I'm calling out of Shanghai, China. Now, today I'm going to give you some notes about how to learn Chinese very fast. I've actually taken the time to bullet point these steps so you can be able to learn Chinese at a very fast pace like I did myself. I came here the first time in 2010, studied language, went back to the U.S., and now I'm back here again. And so there's a lot of things that I've learned and used different techniques to be able to expedite the process of learning my Chinese. So the first step I would definitely say to you is first get some books. Yes, go traditional style, get yourself some books. It can be how to learn Chinese or learning Chinese for dummies or even going to a university and buying their book. The goal is to have some structure a way to be able to have something to fall back on if you lose your focus or you want to go back and have give yourself some progress to be able to track. These are trained professors and professionals that have designed a way to be able to help you accumulate your progress. So I've used some books but that wasn't the only way I've used my learning style. I've also engaged in a lot of listening uh, habits which is one, listening to the radio in Chinese, uh, watching TV, listening to the sounds, I even listened to some Chinese songs. Now these were all to help my hearing improve and if you can't hear anything you can't say anything. So I definitely uh, encourage you to develop a way or find resources where you can engage yourself in an environment where you can hear Chinese on a regular basis. Now there are two different types of Chinese. There is Mandarin and Cantonese. I know Mandarin which is a growing language that the mainland China uses where in Cantonese is used in Hong Kong, Taiwan and where those people have migrated all over the world. So right now you have more mainland Chinese people migrating all over the world and they're actually making a bigger impact with their dollars. And when people are saying the Chinese are coming, they're talking about the mainland Chinese. Now you got the books, you got the listening, now what? Well I've also engaged with a lot of watching. So I've watched TV, I would see the pictures. Yes, the pictures meaning the Chinese characters. I would watch these and see the patterns and what they can be required. Now, when absorbing the language, you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot learn it the same way you learn English. And what I mean is English has letters and it has vowels. Or Chinese, you just see pictures. And how do I create sound to come out of my mouth? Well, they've developed a formula, which is a two-step process, which the first step is something called pinyin and pinyin which is P-I-N-I, P-I-N-Y-I-N which is a Roman numeratic way of uh, pronunciating the words in Chinese so then it will take you to the pictures. So if I'm looking to say uh, the which is T-H in English how would I say that in Chinese? I would say jiga. Now how would I say jiga in Chinese characters which is Z H E, that's one part, and GE, which is another part. And that basically is saying this, or the. So when you're looking for a way to communicate, you can start with just learning pinyin, but eventually you gotta get down to the to the characters, which which translate the pinyin into pictures. So when you're learning the Chinese, the goal is to learn through pictures. Cities like in Beijing, cities in Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Shanghai will definitely have English and Chinese. But when you get deep into China where the factories are or even second or third or fourth tier cities, there are no opinions, there are only characters. So I definitely recommend that you learn the first, the first step, but use that as a stepping stone to learn the second step. Next, I would definitely recommend is if you can come to the country. If you can come to China, it's a lot easier. If you can't, well then you have to create an environment. What environment can we create? Well, we're just going to meet some friends. You can go out and go find some people that are in group who are trying to learn Chinese. Go to universities and make some uh, study groups. You can even meet them there or meetup.com or go online. There's tons of social groups that people are trying to learn that might be local. It's a good way to immerse yourself. And then you also want to be able to create a habit of not looking at the back door of speaking English whenever you need to communicate yourself with something. So if I'm going to a Chinese supermarket, I might want to buy some flour, I might want to buy some milk and some bread. What are these words? Let me find the definition of the words in Chinese 
the pictures when I see it so when I go to the supermarket I can identify that's flour that's bread that's uh, milk let me see the characters that look the same and that way I can start to learn by creating an environment where I'm always engaging myself get yourself a dictionary the dictionary I recommend would be a Mandarin to simplified Mandarin Chinese to English or English simplified Mandarin to Chinese so that way you're going right back to looking up a resource that you can even have on your phone or you can have it in a book which is in hand so you'll be able to quickly look up a way to find your definition of the words you're trying to say another thing I would do is get a, get a buddy when you're making friends there are plenty of people that would love to do a culture exchange language exchange so maybe there is a Chinese person who wants to improve their English or the, whatever the language you speak could be Spanish, French, Russian you can give them that and they'll give you Chinese back also you want to be able to even have an opportunity to get yourself a personal tutor personal tutor can give you direct feedback as a prof trained profession so you can monitor your progress if you're on a time limit and what's on a budget so that way you're being serious with your work and be able to monitor how fast you can learn it to get to these opportunities right away I was serious about learning. I had some food allergies, so when I came, I was asking myself, how do I articulate what I cannot eat? Because maybe these people don't even know. So it was more of a, a serious matter for me to learn the language, so which definitely wasn't a motivation and encouragement to learn as fast as I could. And the last thing I would like to leave you with is just have a good time with the language. Enjoy the language. It's difficult in the beginning, but it gets easier. If you're not yawning or tired, I remember picking up a book, looking at the book, and wanting to fall asleep right away. So that was a sign like, do I give up? It's not working. What do I do? But I decided to keep on going. And after three months, which is usually the first curve where the brain is like, what the heck is going on with my brain? Um, the fourth month, things start to make some sense. I remember watching a show. And on the show, um, I was just sitting there so absorbed into the show. And I was like, suddenly, I realized I knew what they were saying, and it was all in Chinese. I had looked back to my girlfriend. I was like, oh, my God, I can't even believe I know what they're saying, you know. And she's looking at me like, uh, okay. And, uh, but for me, it was a, a definitely a, a, a high of an accomplishment of moving forward. So I'm excited for you. I'm glad that you want to learn. Please remember, it does take hard work. Consistency is the key. You don't have to do long hours a day, but you have to do at least a little bit of something. And that's the first step of learning. I hope this was good information. If you want to know more, please let me know. Please like. You can also email me at hujohn00 at gmail.com. Once again, it's hujohn followed by two zeros at gmail. And don't forget to leave some comments. If you have anything else you'd like to know about China, please let me know. Bye.